He, he at times appeared to work miracles. At one point, I, I was trying to test him and his abilities, and I recalled that there was a, a box that my grandfather had given me that you opened with a little silver key that had been lost for years and years. And he, I said, well, if you can do anything, why don't you produce the key that uh, to that box, which neither of us had seen even the box for a dozen years. By this time, he was naked and locked in a room at the <laughs> mission. And uh, and he went and he would make these bizarre gestures, these strange, archi I don't know what was going on. And he uh, he went into a period of concentration, gave a wild squawk, and <laughs> slammed into my hand and gave me the key. Gave me the key. He was naked. He had been locked in this room for fourteen days at that time, and I was like. I didn't know what was going on, but what was happening to me was I was like utterly unconcerned for his mental health or any practical concern, which was causing a lot of problems for the other people on the expedition. In classical psychology, this is called a, de, a, a folle a deux, a delusion of two. It's a simultaneous schizophrenic episode. It usually <laughs> involves a mother and a daughter. I've never heard of a brother, brother, folle a deux. But it was accompanied by all these exterior manifestations, freak rainbows, and uh, in my case, an encounter with a UFO. And this UFO encounter had a very curious quality to it. Not that they don't always, <laughs> I suppose. But this was even more curious than the pedestrian UFO encounter. What happened was, uh, it, was on the four it was on the 13th day of the reversal. And uh, the I had had this intimation there was something going on about the Southwest. I wasn't clear quite what it was, and the, the two women on the expedition were that afternoon washing our clothes down by the Choro, by the lake, and I looked across the lake and I saw in the sky not a rainbow, but just a spot in the sky that was a spectrogrammatic diffraction, you know, a little patch of rainbow. And I asked the women if they saw it, and they said they didn't. And then it intensified. And by this time, I was plenty in the doghouse as well. I mean, this put a great deal of strain on our small party, as you can imagine. And uh, this spectrogrammatic iridule intensified. And then I said to them, now do you see it? And they looked, and they said, oh, yeah, mm, it's, you know, big deal not much but I knew I knew and knowing means the voice was speaking to me all kinds of weird things went on I mean uh, I discovered that I that the closer I was to water the easier it was for me to rhyme mm. and, which I've never and then years later I encountered a Celtic saying poetry is made at the edge of running water mm. And uh, and the thing would give me these aphorisms, like one time it said the clone's load is a stoned mode, and you know, and I was not sleeping. I was now eleven days without sleep. So uh, that night I decided to sit by the choro, and just because I stayed up all night, and I would walk in the fields, and the thing would draw the would connect up the constellations for me and show me where they were in the sky. There was also embedded in all this thing the intimation of this thing called the teacher, which was a giant insect-like thing that was always like right over here. And there was the sense of something watching us from the sky, something moving us very, very gently but persistently toward this very weird breakthrough.